Hi everyone. Uh, we are here with Ida Show today, uh, with about overcoming stuckness in the client and the therapist. Um, and I'm very grateful that she's with us, uh, helping us understand this uh, really difficult and very really vogue uh, maybe uh, issue. Uh, she is an advanced level schema therapist and advanced level schema trainer, and I'm a keen student of her. And uh, she is also director of Schema Therapy Institute in Midwest Indianapolis. Thank you again. So, oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. We are all yeah. listening to you. Yeah. Yeah. Overcoming stuckness in the patient and the therapist uh, really have similarities but big differences. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the patient, uh, stuckness occurs at points where uh, they feel extreme emotions mm -hmm. or they're starting to panic because they don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. um, and it's often seen when um, they get into behaviors that are very repetitive. The, these are some of the signs where you're going over the same issue over and over. That that's a red flag. Something is wrong, mm -hmm. and and so um, oftentimes this is correlated to dropout. Another sign is uh, they come in and they're very difficult to stay focused. Mm. Uh, they're they're having. Uh, or very overwhelming feelings. It could also be because they have, th they think when you ask them a, a question, they, their expectations of approval are very high. Mm -hmm. So they get stuck in that. There's also uh, a lot of mode flipping. That That's another sign. A lot of mode flipping is they're afraid to, to tackle the issue. So those are signs of it. So what do you do with it? Yeah. Are you asking me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I was throwing that out as a question. Okay. That's, that's often when the therapist gets stuck. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I see this often in therapists. They've got such a big heart and they want the best for their patients, but then that their own schemas get triggered. Oh my God, I'm not a good, yeah, I'm not a good enough therapist. I must be doing something wrong. The guy's not getting better or the woman's not getting better. So the therapist has to look at those things too. Mm -hmm. So one of the things um, I, well, of the many things that I found helpful, using the ABCs. Mm -hmm. ABCs. Yes, which is focusing on their affect and awareness. That's the A. Mm -hmm. the, B, the B is behaviors. How, what is their behaviors telling you? And how, what, what needs to be done to do some behavior, cha behavior change work? Mm -hmm. And the last, the last thing is the cognition and the connection. Mm -hmm. What are they thinking? Uh, what are their beliefs and what is the connection with you and them? Has it lessened? That's another sign of stuckness. They're pulling away. Mm -hmm. So I think if for the therapist, if they can briefly look at the ABCs, it might give them an idea where to go. Okay. Can you know. You, can you give an example? Um, yeah. Yeah. Say a patient comes in and it's the third time that they're rehearsing their entire week. Okay. Now, now, you've you've dealt with this three weeks ago, but they're not getting something, and they're kind of stuck. Now you could see it as an avoidant mode too. So go to the feelings. 
what does telling me this cause you to feel? Again, that's the awareness. What are they aware of? What emotions are they aware of? How has this situation affected your behavior? So you're going to bed? Oh, that must be really difficult. So I understand more of the depression. Mm-hmm. Well, how can we change this be- behavior? I think simplifying it, not minimizing it, but simplif- simplifying the, the, the uh, therapy at that moment. Okay. It's, it's what they need. Uh-huh. Simplifying the tri- triggering uh, yes. moment. Yeah. 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 So, um, an- another thing to do is, and another big sign a patient is struggling, is they're overwhelmed with all the feelings. Mm-hmm. And so, education is needed at this time. And that's when I use the analogy of frostbite. What? Uh, Frostbite. Do you know what frostbite is? Frostbite. Frostbite. It's like if you're up on in the mountains and you don't have proper uh, covering for your nose and your hand, you get frostbite. I see. I see. Uh And so I say to the patient, I think... Uh, your the reason you're feeling so much is your thawing, wow. thawing. and it's yeah. and it's like frostbite yeah. at when you're exposed to the elements and uh, you don't have adequate protection you lose all feeling in your fingers your toes and that's a problem and so when it starts to heal, the pain is terrible. But the doctors get very excited because with the pain, it means, oh, good, we can save the limb. I see. Wow. Now, what with... What metaphor. Yes, but with uh, invalidating environment, being exposed to these elements, just like frostbite, you numb your feelings and so in the therapy you start to feel and Mm -hmm. then you think oh I'm not coming to therapy anymore it hurts but this is a good sign it means you're thawing Thawing. and if you're feeling these emotions that means you can feel other emotions too. Uh-huh. So I, I educate the patient about their feelings of being overwhelmed as a sign of health. Wow. Oh, okay. And you educate them first. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, yes. Way. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. And so when they get stuck, I say, is it possible you're doing some more emotional thawing? So when they get stuck because of a, they're starting to feel a lot more, they're starting to get more memories, they're, 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 they're being flooded with anger and frustration, this can be a stuck point for them. Mm-hmm. So you have to remind them. So I like to use that analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frostbites, frostbites. Yep. Okay. It, yep, <laughs> it's frostbite. A good- and emotional thawing. Yeah, thawing. And what, what does it mean exactly, thawing? Thawing is like melting. Melting, okay. It's like yeah. your, your fingers are frozen, your emotions are frozen. Uh-huh, and then? And you have to start to melt. It's a good sign? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, you it, use it as a good sign. Okay, oh, I yes. see. Yes, yes, yes. As a metaphor. I, I see. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's a it's a strategy that you use to um, overcome st- stuckness also. Yes. 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 Yeah. Being aware and being educated towards the yes. coming uh, feelings. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. An- another stuck point where they're they're afraid to tell you about situations because um, one they don't know how to talk about their emotions. Uh-huh. 
So you have to do a lot of education around emotions. And how, do, how can one do that? Well, I'm a big storyteller. <laughs> we know. <laughs> so I say to the patient that, that comes into the session and, and really doesn't want to give you a lot of information about the past, because they're embarrassed, they don't want to talk about what happened in the past. So I say to them, I'm going to tell you a very short story and I want you to pay attention to the feelings, mm -hmm. the needs, the modes mm -hmm. that are in the story and um, then we'll discuss it after I'm finished. So here's the story. I call it the thunderstorm story. Okay. There's a little child of four years old, sound asleep. And all of a sudden she wakes up because she hears a terrible thunderclap. And she opens up her eyes not knowing what the sound is. And then the lightning strikes. It lights up the entire room. And the figures on the wall, which which in the daytime is really her beautiful tree, but during the lightning storm, it looks like these big arms coming out to reach her. So she's terrified. So she runs to her parents' room, terror, frightened so much. And she said, Mama, Daddy, and her parents wake up. What's the matter with you? You're not a baby. Stop that crying right now. Go back to your bed before you wake up the whole household. So she goes back and she sits on the bed and there's the thunderclap again. There's the lightning and she shakes. And before long, she starts to rock. And after a while, the thunderstorm does not bother her at all. So I'm just going to stop the story. This is a very, very nice, gentle way to get them talking. Sorry, um, our technician guy, technical guy um, asked me something, and I lost the, that, that part. Uh, the, the child goes to the room, yep. and the, he, he or she hears the thunder strikes. Yep. And then what happens? It's OK? She no, no. She went to the parents. Did you get that part? Yeah, yeah. she go to parents and they sent them back. Yes, and she sat on her bed. Uh -huh. And when the thunderstorm, she covered her ears, covered her eyes, and shook. Okay. And then after a while, she just rocked and got very quiet. And the thunderstorm got louder, but she didn't shake anymore. Wow, okay. Okay, cool. so then you stop the story. You say to the patient, what did the child feel? What did the child need? Uh -huh. and, what, and what message would she have taken away from this situation about her feelings and about herself? It really takes the patient from not knowing what to say to opening a dialogue. It's mm -hmm. very safe. And I like to think of it as because you're talking about fear, you're talking about uh, uh, the mode flipping, you're talking about what she really needed. And mm -hmm. then you say, what would a good parent have done? Mm -hmm. And the, parent may, the patient may not know. So education. So this is, and then you can say to the patient, close your eyes. Get in touch with some of those same feelings. And you went to a parent or an adult, and they, again, missed your needs. Mm -hmm. Now the patient, because you've talked about another child that, you know, that they could just hypothesize about, it's it almost opens up those neurons, those, those feeling centers, and before you know it, they're talking about feelings. Mm -hmm. It's a very safe way, and it can really help unstuck. I see. I see. Unstick your patient. Yeah. Okay. You trigger emotions with the story, talking about the story, and then 
uh, while they have the emotion in them, and yeah. you try to start uh, maybe experiential work. Yes. Wow. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ton yeah. Tons of story. Our so. Yes, yes. And remember, in the story, there are many modes that the little girl flips into. I see. Very vulnerable. And some patients say, oh, I bet she was angry that her parents sent her back. And I said, oh, so that's another mode flip. But did you pick up detachment? Did you pick up the detach protector? And so another education point, you know, this this was the only thing the child could do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see. Yeah. So this it's is... a nice way uh -huh. to get information. Uh, storytelling. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. This is for awareness part. It's not only for awareness, it educates, it, it's education about feelings, it also looks at the behavior the child did, and it it's, talks about modes, yeah. you know, and yeah. then it's a, it's a nice way to get some deeper understanding of their experiences. Yeah, I've even used this with patients with ASD because they need a lot of education about emotions. Yeah, yeah. I saw a slide of yours uh -huh. full of um, some terms uh, under mm -hmm. some uh, titles. Sad, yep. sad mad, glad. glad. Yeah, the, the four, yes. Now, yeah. this is another stuck for point for patients because they say I don't know what I'm feeling uh -huh. and and to respond to that well of course you don't no one's ever taught you but really it's not as hard as you might think can you re can you there's four major major um, feeling groups sad sad mad glad and scared scared Yes. Yeah, right. And and so yep. So how about if we just start there? Are you feeling sad? No. Okay, are you feeling glad? No. <laughs> um are you feeling mad? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I, I in stuckness, you want to let the patient feel that they're, they still matter, that you, you're accepting them even in the stuckness. Yeah. But you, but you have to name it. Uh -huh. Okay, talk about it. Talk yes. about stuckness. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Very, very directly. You can say, have you noticed over the last few weeks that we haven't really got into so any deep details? It's all surface. Uh -huh. Why do you think that is? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, you know, can you feel that maybe our connection isn't as strong? that you, you kind of pulled away a little bit. Mm -hmm. What can we do to make our connection stronger? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, but I think talking about stuckness directly is the first step. Talking about it, yeah. 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 And you, and you want to balance it. I'm not saying this to be critical I'm saying this because I'm afraid your needs won't get met if you have a, 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 a bit of a wall up here. Yeah. yeah. I also like to go over with the patient. It's called, uh, it's a poem by Portia Nelson. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's, it's a poem called, There's a Hole in My Sidewalk. Have you heard? I, have I, you heard that? I heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's very, very short. I give okay. it to the patient. The first chapter is: I walk down the street, 
there's a hole in the sidewalk, I fall in. I'm at a loss. I'm helpless. It isn't my fault, and it takes forever for me to get out. The second chapter, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it, but I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place, but it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. Chapter 3, I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in it. I see it's there, and I still fall in. It's a habit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my eyes are open. I know where I am, and it is my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter 4, I walk down the same street. There's a hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Cool. Chap chap the final chapter is I walk down another street. <laughs> what is this? Yes, so I give this poem to my patients. Uh -huh. And I say, what chapter do you think you're in? Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's often between two and three where they're still blaming other people they're not taking responsibility wow yeah yeah and chapter three is well they're taking some responsibility but now it's a habit <laughs> yeah so it's a nice way to say okay this is great awareness Mm -hmm. Now we have to do, we have to come up with strategies to break that habit because it's interfering with getting your needs met. Oh, but this is a really nice and gentle way of, um, uh, what can I say, Confront confronting the Yes, children, yes. Uh, with blaming the others and very, yes, very yeah, yeah, yeah. compassionate way. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. They yeah. cho you choose. Uh, which poem are you in? Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then, yeah, yeah. And then they have like uh, homework mm -hmm. to, to, you know, well, think about that. There's reasons you did this. I wonder if we can do some imagery around this. Yeah. With this awareness still. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, cool. What was the name of this technique, poem? <laughs> well, the poem is called "There's a Hole in My Sidewalk." Hole in my sidewalk. Okay. By by Portia Nelson. Okay. <laughs> Inter really yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to find things that can really simplify the task. Because for the patient, it feels like a mountain they have to face. Yeah. 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 So. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, this is like your um, games, which you use. Yes. Group therapies. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, you're, uh, and, and. Sorry. No, I was just saying these techniques can be used in individual as well as group. Yeah, 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 yeah. In group, it's maybe more easy to conduct those kind of things. Uh, with, yes. With poems, with stories. Uh, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we are talking about stuckness, and we can use these techniques for the awareness of the feelings and to to label the stuckness maybe. Because yes. It's, it's a really um, hard um, time for the therapist uh, not to uh, not to frighten the patient with this stuck yes. but you have to talk about it but yes sometimes it sounds like that you don't like the patient you don't like this situation like it's their fault so you mm -hmm. said that it's really important to empathize with it yeah 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 I I think too um, it's, saying to the the patient this is what I would would like to help you with this is what I'm willing to do what are you willing to do to to work on this 
I'm going to give you strategies, but what's your role? Uh-huh. And your, the what, role? Yeah, role. Yeah. What's, yeah, yeah. What's your role? Uh, yeah. Th- th- this helps them to take active role in their problem. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, uh-huh. yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, otherwise, I think the, the, the therapists start to feel, oh, my God, I'm doing all the work. They're not doing anything, you know? Uh-huh. And so that can really cause a, a disconnection with the patient. Uh-huh. This, that's the therapist part. Yep. I'm, making, I'm playing all my role, and I'm yep. not getting any response. Yeah, yeah. It's very frustrating. It's exhausting. And so I think learning new strategies to break through mm-hmm. those stuck points... Um, mm-hmm. And what's your experience with the therapist stuckness? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think the therapist stuckness is also triggered by different schemas. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but mostly I see um, the therapist being aware of the stuckness but not knowing what to do with it. So they flood the patient with too much information. Mm-hmm. And so, it, yeah, so uh, for the most part, I, I see uh, the therapist getting stuck between their heart and their head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they've cool. got a big, a big, big heart for the patient. They want the best for their patients. And but they 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 they're, they get stuck. I don't know what else to do. Uh, I've tried this. I've tried that. And we're still not getting you anywhere. And I'll say to the therapist, "Have you talked to the patient about that?" I see. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And so that's when I, I I I would suggest saying, "Have you noticed the last few weeks?" You know, we haven't been as connected, have, or is it just me? Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, I've tried different things, and there seems to be a little bit of a distance between us. Have you been aware of that? So it's an opportunity to talk about the elephant in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it it comes to the issue immediately. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I've got to tell you, so many therapists will then say to me later, "Oh my God, I feel so much better. I don't know why I didn't think of that." And I said, oh, <laughs> "What mode did you just flip into there?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, is it detach something? I think it's uh, the demanding parent. Demanding. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Before yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thinking with heart and think. It, it's, not the, it's not good thinking with the heart then. It's got to be connected. It's got to be a balance between the two. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. A very simple very very simple thing to do with the patient that's stuck draw a picture of a balance beam do you know what a balance beam is it's like the gymnast walks on that little little uh, beam okay Uh, beam you mean lights yeah you know like um, no no a beam a gymnast okay I see Okay. A gym, a gym, a gymnast. My friend told me, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, good, good. And so, at one end, you can put uh, all or none. Uh-huh. And in the middle is the balance, where 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 everything can be handled. The healthy adults, right in the middle. I'd say, where at what end are you at? In connecting to your healthy adult, mm-hmm. are you at this end where there's no connection, or are you um, all in your head? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. 
I see. You know. I, I also wonder if um, our watchers uh, want to, did ask anything or not yet still. We, do, do we have any question? OK. We have some young therapists also in the room. Oh, good. <laughs> good, good. They say we don't have any question yet. OK, so we can continue about it. Yeah. OK, good. Good. Yeah. Nice metaphors, Ida. Yeah, always. do you have... Do you have any questions? Well, uh, this is a very big issue, actually, isn't it? Stuck. Yeah, oh, yes. It's very yes. wide. Yes. Yes. Um, by myself, I have some. Yep. I have some co uh, clients with me uh, that we are working for years, and each time we are talking with different uh -huh. names, but similar issues uh, the managers change mm -hmm. the peers change the names of the peers change names of the managers change. so sure. I feel like we are stuck somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. but the, mm -hmm. the events are really live we, we all together with him or her um, are willing to talk the issue it's new fresh but actually it's as a pattern but yes sometimes I find it difficult um, to show it. I see it, but it's difficult mm -hmm. for me to show it because the client is stuck in the names, not the patterns. Yeah. And and in the telling of the story, they're they're not really connected to how they feel about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so slow them down. Slow your patient down and say something like, you know, we have visited this same issue mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if you can just slow down a minute, change gears and think about what this makes you feel. I see. You know, <coughs> you've, t you've told me that this person did this and this person did that and now you have to do this and you know, you're telling me all these doing things and things that people have done to you and and now you have to look for another job because this one's an asshole and whatever. So I'm going to slow you down. How does it make you feel? Mm -hmm. And what do you need mm -hmm. to... to, to really work on these emotions because I'm afraid these same patterns are going to keep repeating mm -hmm. until we slow down, look at the feelings, mm -hmm. look at the needs, mm -hmm. and look at how you think about it. Mm -hmm. because, you know, if, if you're thinking that it's hopeless, then the pattern will repeat we have to work on changing your 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 beliefs. Mm -hmm. We have to work on the, your awareness of the emotions, the awareness of what you need, and strategies to get those needs met. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get any of that work slowed down enough because he's more connected to the wrongness of what people have done and uh, this co-worker did this. He's more connected to the grievance. And so there's another technique that I use. It's called walking through the modes. Walking through the modes. Okay. Y yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you I say, I'm going to tell you another story and then we're going to practice with your situation you talked about today. Mm -hmm. A mother went to work and uh, as soon as she got to work, her boss started yelling at her. So she was very upset. And then a co-worker said, oh, uh, I, I don't think you should have worn that blouse to the office. It's and she just was criticized all morning long and she couldn't wait for the lunch break and at lunch she went out to her car and her tire was flat another thing 
So she kept thinking, oh, I just got to get through the day. When I get home, I'll just take a nice bath. And just before she, and because my husband's taking the kids for pizza, so I won't have to worry about that. Ten minutes before she left, she got a phone call. Her husband had to take, couldn't come and take the kids. So she had now had to do that. So she, so she had a bad, bad day and so she gets home and the kids are crying I'm hungry and blah 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 and she said give me 10 minutes I'm going to change my clothes and we're gonna have a pizza party and so the kids were happy so she went into her room and threw herself on the bed and she said oh I got to try that walking through my modes. Hmm. And so here's what she did. Okay, I want to hear from my vulnerable child. Oh, it was terrible today. I felt all alone. Nobody was supportive. Everyone was critical. Oh, that's awful. Do you have anything else we say to say from, from the vulnerable child? No. Uh, that was good. Okay, now what about the angry child? Yes, made me so angry. My boss criticized me and said something that wasn't even true and he wouldn't listen to me. Oh boy, that's good. Get that anger out. Good for you. Now, talk about the punitive parent. Oh, you shouldn't think that. You shouldn't think that uh, uh, the kids are... You, you wanted a break from the kids, that's a terrible thing. Okay, that's enough from the punitive parent. Mm -hmm. Now connect to the healthy adult. Well, I think you did a pretty good job. So you walk through the modes. You connect to the healthy adult. You go back to the vulnerable child. I'm so sorry, Dave was hard. You go to the angry child. You had every right to be angry, but you didn't hurt anyone. You didn't say anything to regret. You did a good job. And you go through uh, all the modes. Patients sometimes feel that they don't have a right to complain. And as a therapist, it's hard to hear them complaining about the same thing over and over. So I teach them walking through the modes so they can get their complaints out. We hear, we hear from all the different modes. They connect to their healthy adult. And then I say, let's go back. What would the healthy adult need to say now to your little vulnerable child? Normally, we do that um, and we leave this to the client. Okay? Yes. And let's um, sit that mode in that chair. In the, but you, you make yep. it in an um, order. Yes. Okay, first your vulnerable child, now your angry child. Or, yeah, you yeah. Make them walk one by one. Yes. You voice each of them. Give yes. the voice to each of them. Okay. Yes, and then you can you listen to all the complaints from every mode, mm -hmm. and then the healthy adult goes back, and and gives hope and encouragement, and makes a connection to their own vulnerable child, makes a connection to the angry child, even makes connection to the coping modes. Yeah. And when and when you get to the critical or demanding critic modes, you say, you're wrong. I've listened to you all my life. I'm turning your volume off. Mm -hmm. Nothing you have to say. I'm in charge now. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you are um, telling me get off from the room while we were making a workshop in Amsterdam. Okay. <laughs> I was the critical parent. Yes, yes, I did, yes. I saw you first time uh, fighting with the critical mode, so. <laughs> yes, yes. Lucky yeah. for your clients. Yes, uh, it, it, yeah. It taught me a lot, that workshop, and I'm also...
doing the same thing today. Yeah. Either thank you very much. Very, very useful um, hints. Yes, yes. Working with the stuckness. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, Usually I do this in a whole day workshop. I don't, don't do it in an hour, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I have, pay, I have the therapist practice, and yeah. Yeah, well, thank you very much. This is our second uh, program at the yes. Schema TV. Thank you for contributing. I yes. hope we see each other sooner online or real time. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for joining and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you, Al. All right. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Take, Take care. Bye. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Um, I hope uh, we see each other soon. And sorry for the technical issue today. And bye-bye and from Schema TV. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.